Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about the movie Spider-Man Lotus. For those of you guys who do not know, this is a full-length feature fan film that came out on YouTube a couple of days ago. This movie has been uh, in the works for, I want to say, about two or three years. Um, and there's been a lot of controversy about it. A lot of people thought it wasn't going to get made because um, halfway through the production, somebody who is really pissed at the director, leaked old messages from a group chat showing that, you know, both the director and pretty sure the guy who played Spider-Man um, used to make really inappropriate jokes and say the N-word and stuff like that. So um, I don't know a whole lot about this movie and this project. I think it's something that's been going on for a really long time and it had an ungodly amount of support behind it. But that being said, me personally, um, I've just kind of heard the memes about Spider-Man Lotus being the racist Spider-Man or whatever. Um, but I saw that... The full-length movie is now available to watch on YouTube. If you guys want to go watch it yourself, you guys definitely can. And I would de definitely uh, say if you're listening to this review and you're kind of like, is this is this movie worth watching? Um, I'm kind of going to say no, but I'm also kind of going to say yes. So we're just going to dive right into this, shall we? So um, right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and address this. Um, I watched this video, I mean, I watched this movie with very low expectations and I think that it hit my very low expectations. I wasn't expecting this movie to be great but I was expecting it to hit a couple of notes and it somewhat hit a couple of notes. There was a lot of emotional sequences in it but at the same time we didn't get to meet any of the characters that die in this movie before they die in this movie. We don't get to see Spider-Man being Spider-Man in this movie. Um, we never get to see Aunt May but it is said that she is alive and well um, and we never get to really meet the villain of the movie was Green Goblin, but he was dead by the time the movie already started, which was weird. The only action sequence we got was Spider-Man fighting the Shocker at the beginning of the movie, and it was okay, but at the same time, I feel like in a Spider-Man movie, there should be a little bit more action, and I understand that they're doing it on a budget, and they probably can't afford to have an action sequence every so often, but this movie, I feel like, did not live up to what it was kind of advertised to be. Um, a lot of the people who were hyping it up forever and a lot of the reason why I personally wanted to see it was because the trailer for it showed a lot of cool swinging scenes and a lot of pretty decent CGI for something that is a fan-made project and um, all of the swinging scenes that they feature in the trailers are all the swinging scenes in the entire movie pretty much. Um, I want to say this movie is an hour and 47 minutes long if you look at it and you see it's two hours and you're a little turned off by that. Um, 13 minutes of those are credits, so if that helps you out a little bit, go for it. Um, but of that hour and 43 minutes, there's probably about seven minutes of action in the entire thing. Like I said, the opening sequence is a fight against Shocker, which is kind of cool, and there's some fun stuff to be had there. Um, and then that's pretty much it. You get to see flashbacks of when he fought Green Goblin forever ago, but you never actually see Green Goblin... Aside from those flashbacks, you never really hear much about Norman Osborn as a character. Um, they reference the death of Captain Stacy, but once again, you never meet the Captain Stacy. And then the big death of this movie, which is what the whole movie was going for, is the death of Gwen Stacy storyline. Um, we get introduced to Gwen Stacy in the beginning of the movie. We get maybe like 10 minutes with her while she's alive and well, and it's... Peter narrating and talking about how they had a really great date and Peter was planning on proposing at the end of the date or whatever and stuff like that and it's interesting it's cool but uh I saw one of the top comments on this uh video that said this and I kind of 100% agree with it this movie feels like if you start watching a movie halfway through it and you have no idea the context of anything that's going on. Here's the thing. We as Spider-Man fans know the context because we've read the comics. We've seen the other Spider-Man movies. And we know what they're talking about. But with these specific iterations of the characters, we never got to know them. And it feels really weird that they're doing the death of Gwen Stacy storyline without really giving us time to meet Gwen Stacy. Um, like I said, she's alive in the beginning of the movie for about 10 minutes. Uh, we don't see her death scene. We don't really have the whole gist of how she died. We just know that Green Goblin killed her. Um, I think that this movie over relies on people to know the Spider-Man character. I feel like some of my hype about this movie was the fact that people who maybe don't necessarily feel like going out to theaters or going to find buy streaming services to go watch a Spider-Man movie were going to get access to seeing a Spider-Man movie. But this movie doesn't Spider-Man. It, it's not very Spider-Man-y. And it kind of really bothers me. And then 
Um, like I was saying, with it over-relying on the people who watch this film to know the Spider-Man stories, um, there's a lot of emotional sequences, and um, I'm not condoning drinking um, inappropriately, but there's a damn good drinking game you could play with this movie. Anytime somebody mentions you not being alone, or not being the only person who lost somebody, or mentions the death of literally anybody, um, you take a shot, you will be hammered about 20 minutes into the movie, and it just keeps getting worse, because... Um, I'll tell you kind of basically how this movie goes. Um, opening scene, action, great. Then we get to see the four characters, Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane Watson, Harry Osborn, Peter Parker, hanging out for about, about a solid 10 minutes. Then we flash forward, Gwen Stacy is dead, and now what we see is um, introduce Peter Parker at a funeral, not at a funeral, um, at a graveyard looking at a tombstone or whatever being really sad then we see mary jane alone being really sad and then you see them being alone and sad together and um then you see harry osborne being sad and then peter parker being sad with harry osborne those two argue um mary jane watson and peter argue um and then it's just this person being sad talking about their sadness this person being sad talking about this, their sadness um this person watching a video of old clips of them being happy and then it's played over sad music and now we're seeing the actor being sad um there's sequences where peter is literally just sitting in his spider-man suit on a rooftop in the rain somewhere and it's cute and i see what they're going for but it's just painfully like what because they made it like i said they made a spider-man movie but it wasn't very spider-man-y and i'm not saying that that you can make that you can't make a spider-man movie and not have it relating to Spider-Man a lot, or having Spider-Man doing a bunch of Spider-Man stuff. But at the same time, this feels like it wanted to be a Spider-Man movie, but they wanted an hour and 45 minute long movie, but they couldn't afford to actually have Spider-Man appear in the movie. So they just made it about Spider-Man characters. And what to me is weird is it feels like they were, they definitely had a lot of love of the characters and a lot of passion of the characters but it also feels like if you got a bunch of people to write just a generic script about a group of four teenage friends who loses one of them and it's a movie about grief you plug all those things into like a script generator and you generate it that's what the script feels like it's very bland it's very basic um a lot of the lines were very predictable like there was a lot of times during, throughout this movie where mary jane came and walked up and she said like a couple words and i could immediately know exactly where the conversation was going and i'm not saying that that's a problem because as somebody who is like a screenwriter i've written about four or five movie scripts before um maybe it's just that's how my mind works but um, this was a very simplistic movie. It didn't do anything super special or out of the blue. And then once again, I feel like you should have had more action sequences. I feel like we get told about all the people who Peter has saved as Spider-Man, but we never once see him actually save anybody. Uh, we never get to really see him being a hero. The swinging scenes looked cool, but we only got two swinging scenes basically in the entire movie. Um, there's a lot of sequences that are really dark and not like a, oh my god, that's like nitty gritty dark. Like, no, it's like literally too dark. You can't see what's going on. Um, and something that happens in this movie is uh, Peter, dressed up as Spider-Man, goes to a Make-A-Wish kid or whatever. And he's talking to that Make-A-Wish kid for about 40 minutes in the movie. And he just talks about things that would have been more interesting to see than this movie. And I kind of hate it when movies do that. It's like uh, the prequels in, what's it called? The, the prequels in Star Wars or whatever, there's scenes in the first two movies where they're talking about like, oh, this has happened during this battle and this happened during this war or whatever, and we were on this planet doing this thing. And I'm like, that would be 10 times more interesting than hearing them just talk about random politics the entire time. And that's kind of how it felt in this scene where he's talking about what his fight with whatever XYZ character from Spider-Man's rogues gallery or whatever. And I'm like, kind of would have been cool. Uh, I will say this, the costume design in here is cool. I think that the Spider-Man costume looks amazing. Um, I think that the Green Goblin, even though we only see him for a short period of time, looks really fucking cool. It does kind of bother me. Every time he's talking, his mouth moves about this much. And it, it's really weird to me because he'll be saying like really like long phrases and it's just... And... I know it's such a small thing and because of how much makeup and stuff that they used on the character they probably they probably couldn't do more than that but I was like 
<sighs> painful. Um, and then another thing is, since they went with the most basic Spider-Man villain for this, and they did Green Goblin, um, a lot of it just felt used. Like, this movie felt like a combination of Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man No Way Home, because there's a sequence where he's just beating the crap out of, um, the Green Goblin, and it literally just feels like the end of No Way Home when Tom Holland's Peter Parker is just beating up on him. And at least in the No Way Home one, you can kind of see the emotions and the rage and stuff like this, whereas in this one, it kind of, like, you felt nothing from it. Um, but yeah, so overall, I'm gonna give kind of some critiques for it that I think they definitely should have potentially done. Um, for one, if you were going to have it be this runtime, and you were gonna make it about the death of Gwen Stacy storyline, uh, you should have kept Gwen Stacy alive for at least 35 minutes. Uh, you should have built up the fact that Green Goblin was a threat and that um, he was kind of killing some of the um, people who are important in Peter Parker's life. Because something that I really don't like about this one particularly is the fact that uh, they mentioned like the death of like so many different people and I'm like, we never got to meet them. And you don't even need to necessarily have us meet them, but like, have it be referenced at the beginning of the movie. Oh, um, Captain Stacy's dead and like Gwen Stacy's really sad because her father's passed away or something like that. And then, you know, Gwen and Peter are still like going fine or whatever, everything's working out for them. And then, ta-da, whatever, Gwen Stacy dies. And then we spend the last 45 minutes working on the grief side of things because that's something that really bothers me is this entire movie is just supposed to show grief and the, lo the loss that people are dealing with and how they're having problems with their image of like Peter, Peter Parker is like I'm not a hero I've caused the death of so many different people or whatever and it just feels so weird because we didn't get to meet the people who died and he's over here like really sad about it and we haven't seen him save anybody we haven't seen him necessarily be the reason why anybody died and it just felt very like an incomplete movie and I really did not like that. Um, another thing that I would say, if you're going to take a very popular character who is from the comics and they're a very, like, cool action person, spend the time to make a couple more fight scenes. Um, obviously, you know, if it feels like it's not going to work with the plot that you have going for it, that's fine. But, like, also, it kind of feels like they're just using the Spider-Man character to make the story that they wanted to tell and not using the Spider-Man character to tell a Spider-Man story that they want to tell. Um... But that being said, I, I think that overall what they were going for works, but I feel like for what they were doing, it should have been way shorter. Um, I'm going to give them the, the advice that uh, one of my old film teachers kind of taught me. Um, if you are starting off and you're this is going to be one of your first film projects you're ever doing, which I'm pretty sure it is their first film project that they've ever done, do a short film, right? Because a lot of the stuff that they have in this movie feels like filler and when you're watching something that is two hours long you kind of want to be something that you're kind of able to attach to connect to in any way shape or form and this had none of that i think that it was kind of a big waste of time i'm not gonna lie after watching it i'm kind of like that's two hours of my life i'm never getting back um and i think it's really weird i, I think that some of the choices that they made with it wasn't very great and um yeah but um I, I'm not going to say I could do better. And I will say that. Kudos to them. They went out, they did this. Um, they worked really hard on it and they were able to actually accomplish their dream of making a full length Spider-Man movie. So kudos to them. Hats off to them. Um, I'm glad it's gotten the amount of recognition it has. When I watched it, it had like 2.3 million views or something like that. I think well deserved. They definitely put a lot of hard work and effort into it. Um, I don't want to say that the acting in it isn't that great, because honestly, in my opinion, I think the guy who played Harry did pretty good uh, in the limited amount of time we saw him. I think that the girl who played Mary Jane did really good in the amount of time that we saw them. Um, Peter was okay. Uh, I think that one of the problems with trying to remake something that's been done a handful of times is, like, he's not going to live up to any of the other live-action Spider-Man actors. And, like, he looks the part, but he also doesn't feel like the part at all. Um, and he does some kind of Spider-Man things that, like, doesn't seem like stuff that Spider-Man would do. And then it's supposed to be like, oh, well, he just did it out of grief or whatever. But, like, he doesn't sell us on the grief, like, the emotion that he has. So, I don't know. I also think it doesn't help that, um, 
when he had the sequ really long like 40 minute sequence where he's um helping out this like make-a-wish kid and he's hanging out with the make-a-wish kid um he keeps his mask on the entire time so a lot of times he like does anything that i feel like he's supposed to be emoting he should be acting with his entire body and instead he's just saying the lines and it kind of feels like they're missing out on so much there um yeah that being said i'm gonna go ahead and rank this movie i'm gonna give it a solid i'm gonna give it a 61 out of 100 it wasn't terrible by any means. I would not consider watching it again. I wouldn't necessarily recommend watching it to people. I feel like it's way too long. A lot of the scenes drag on way longer than they need to be. Um, it's just like, here's this random sad thing after here's this random sad thing after here's these two people having a conversation. Here's these two people having a conversation. None of the conversations are very engaging or interesting to watch, but I will give them props for props are due. The CGI is pretty good for a low, low budget little movie like this. And I think that... What they were going for was interesting. The ending, to me, is like, why? It doesn't make sense to me at all, but pop off, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do think that giving it a 60 is a little generous, but I am giving it that because it is a low-budget film, and they made a two-hour-long low-budget film. So, kudos to them. But yeah, uh, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow, bow, bow. He wanted me to go, but first I did this. He planned a day, then we did this. Wanna be in love with the girls with the kisses. Don't give a damn, I'll rid this. I like this when I run the distance. I run the fine kids, go for listings. I wanna live within the business. Buy more than what's on the clearances. You're getting big because I know you're a physicist. I wanna deny this shit, I'm unlimited.